It's usually like an excuse. Like, honestly, I think as a girl, you have equal opportunity in the world. Oh my Lanta. I would have been furious by this point. I would have threw my hat down. I would have got up and made a big old dramatic exit. Pretty privilege in what you're saying and mm. that you're white and you present. Do you think I'm pretty? Thank you. Whoa, okay. So <laughs> this girl, Mindy in the wheelchair, she wants to fly and leap over this group of women to get this girl Pearl's neck. I'm pretty sure. This is even more controversial than even I expected. Hi, thank you for calling CalFresh. Hi, thanks, I'm a woman. Oh, sorry, sweetie, we can't help you. Hi, thank you for calling Social Security. Do you have a disability? Well, yes, I do. Absolutely, we can help you. What's your name, Maria? Oh, wait, sorry, you're a woman? Yeah, we don't help your kind around here. Hi friends, your buddy Gilbert here with a very special video today. Not too long ago, I did a video covering Sharon Osbourne's being fired from the talk. Do you remember that video? If I like Piers and he's perceived as racist, then I'm racist. Is That's that what you're case. saying? That is it's what they're the saying, case, yep. But I think pre no, and, and that is what they're saying. I really enjoyed the conversation it opened up because I feel like today in this political culture of identity and identity politics, we all all are having really hard conversations and sometimes those conversations are hard to have because we enter them already feeling like we're gonna be alienated because we don't fit in with the rest of the crowd or we're so concerned about fitting in with the rest of the crowd we just kind of develop our opinions based on what our groups decide we should believe I've always been kind of a lone wolf in that I don't necessarily subscribe to any political party I'm not a liberal I'm not a conservative I'm not a Republican Republican, I'm not a Democrat. I'm very much in the center. I'm what you would call probably a moderate, an independent, or a centrist. So having said that, I'm really excited to get into today's video. We are going to be watching a video done by Vice where there's a panel of different women that are all coming together to discuss feminism. What does feminism mean for today? What has it always meant? Who identifies as a feminist? Who doesn't identify as a feminist? And why? I just want to start out by saying that championing women and fighting for women's rights has always been really important to me, primarily because all of my heroes are women. No, I'm serious. Like, except for Jesus and Michael Jackson, from She-Ra, Paula Abdul, Storm from the X-Men, Britney Spears, Celine Dion, Darlene Check, Joyce Meyer, Sailor Moon, Selena. I mean, the list of women that have impacted my life for the better just goes on and on and on. I totally understand that I am a man, and so some people might might even have an issue with me doing a commentary on this video because I don't know that walk of life and I never will know that walk of life. But that's why I'm grateful that this panel of women is here for them to share their stories and their experiences. So I'm coming in with an open heart and an open mind knowing that whatever it is that they are saying, that they are feeling and experiencing, that is for me to take in and try to make as much sense of it as I I can. One of the things that I feel very strongly is that everyone should be invited to the table to have an objective conversation because truth isn't subjective to gender or your skin color or your orientation. Truth is truth. And if somebody has a valid concern, I like to hear them out and hopefully try to gain better understanding. I'm an empath, so it's not going to take very much for me at all to really pick up on someone that is being sincere and transparent and vulnerable. And and that's what I'm hoping is going to happen in these conversations today. <laughs> Vice invited a diverse group of women to hash out the state of feminism in the U.S. Hi, welcome everybody. I'm Liz Landers, I'm Vice News' chief political correspondent, and we are here today to talk about some of the biggest issues dividing women across the country. In other words, we're here to talk about feminism. First, I just want to say we know we can't represent everybody's views, but we did try our best to bring together a diverse group of women today. 
In today's I just want to pause it right there. What does that mean, a diverse group of women? Because I'm from the point of view that your perspective should not be determined based off of your gender. I mean, I understand that this is very gender specific. It is about feminism. So it makes sense that they would really target this conversation to be amongst the women. Having said that, I don't believe that just because someone's black, they are going to believe a certain way or because they're gay or lesbian or bi or trans, that they're going to have a certain set of beliefs. I know for myself, I don't tend to believe what is popular all the time. Sometimes I do, but not all the time because of my being any one of those groups that I belong to. So I would already have a question about what do you mean by diverse? Because it's she has piercings, she's lesbian, she's black, she's white, or is it hopefully something a little bit deeper that you sat us down and you got our views on certain things? That would be what I would hope would be the diversity she's talking about. Polarized world, is feminism dead? You guys saw your hand. I think that depends on the definition of feminism. <laughs> I strongly think that feminism is more of an action than an identity. I would say it's uplifting all women, in which case it's very alive. At the same time, um, if we do follow that definition, feminism has splintered off into so many different areas that it you can look at um, people like Sheryl Sandberg who say you should just get another nanny if you feel oppressed. And if we're talking <laughs> about that kind of feminism, um, yeah, it's pretty dead. Yeah, I mean, as long as the human race exists, feminism, feminism will never be dead. There's something that we're always going to have to strive and work, work towards um, to make sure that there's equality. So I want to make sure that we start off by reading what the definition of feminism is. Merriam-Webster defines feminism as a belief in and an advocacy of the political, economic, and social equality of the sexes expressed especially through organized activity on behalf of women's rights and interests. So it probably goes without saying that to be a feminist, you have to first subscribe to the idea that things are unbalanced and they're unbalanced in favor of men. So I think that that's possibly why some people have an issue with the word feminist because it already comes with the worldview that is specifically in favor of men and you want to push back against that. So feminism is not dead. I don't know that it can die. As long as there's power and oppression, there will be people fighting for equity. So that idea that I don't know that it can die is quite bleak. If you're fighting for something that you believe can never happen, I'm tr I am try to be quite positive, but that's a very dark way of existing. I don't think that that means you should just give up. I think you should still continue to fight the fight, but I almost feel like you should stay a little bit hopeful that in time, things will maybe slowly, but progressively get better and better. So that really hurts me that this woman who's in a wheelchair, her name is Mindy, Mindy Linden, she's from um, Washington just said that kind of hurts my heart and um, until that somehow goes away feminism is alive and well I think feminism um, isn't actually about equality it's about equality when it benefits us I think feminism it's really about women wanting special privileges and treatment okay so this girl Pearl Davis, I believe is her name. Let me back it up a little bit. Let me go there. Pearl Davis from Illinois just kind of threw a monkey wrench in all of this by saying that feminism really is about special treatment of women. And I can see critics of a feminism feeling that way. From what I understand, people that are critics of a feminism believe that we already are quite equal. And so projecting this idea of a continued fight for women's rights is actually an overshadow shoot and is now just looking for specialized treatment of women. That's what Pearl seems to be coming from that point of view. So I'm really excited to see who amongst them are going to agree with her. I'm thinking there's going to be a lot of pushback, especially from the first two women that have already spoken. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Women wanting special privileges and treatment at the expense of men. Often. Yeah. <laughs> Mindy's already giving her this face like, um, yeah, we're going to have an issue here today. And I think it's alive and well, sadly. Ooh, she said, I think feminism is alive and well, sadly. She is really coming strong with her views here. She's not holding back. I love that. I love when you can be in a room and you know everyone's going to disagree with you, but you're just going to boldly say what you came to say takes a lot of guts. I mean, even if I disagree with you, I'm going to respect you for putting yourself on the line 
and sharing what you think, even though you know it's not going to be popular? I think feminism is also alive and well. Um, there are different kinds of feminism, right? Like, that is obvious. Um, and I, for me, as, as a womanist, as a black feminist, right, as someone who's really thinking about human rights, dignity, right, equity. So she added the word black feminist. I'm pretty sure I know where a lot of this is going to go because I've paid attention to political and social conversations like this. There's something called intersectionality. So intersectionality is when one issue overlaps the other. They intersect, right? Like a, think of like an intersection. In this issue of feminism, you're going to have that be a road going somewhere and then something else is going to overlap it. Maybe because you are black or you're Asian or you're Latino or you are transgender or you are disabled. There's this issue issue where they overlap and they become a brand new experience of living. So she's already tying her feminism to her skin color. And I have a strong suspicion that this is going to be an ongoing theme in this conversation. Right. As long as that's not that need isn't met, we're still going to keep fighting. I well, I wonder what she's thinking. Well. I'd say that it's also very nuanced. And I think what it looks like is going to Jordan Willow Evans from world. New Hampshire. For me, I just see it as a lens, which isn't necessarily antagonistic or uh, protagonistic. It's just a useful tool. I love that. I love that she's saying this is a lens because that's what it really is. It's not something that you register for or whatever. It's a world of you. It's the way that you see things. And I feel like that's really important to keep highlighting. It is a subscription to a set of beliefs. The reason why you see the world that way can be multiple factors because you've seen things with your own eyes. You've learned from history how things used to be. One of the things that I think is worth noting is tying back to what Mindy said said earlier, if it's a world of you that just kind of is shaped by the way you choose to see the world or the way that you feel because of your environment has forced you to see the world, can that ever change? Even if you notice changes, is there going to be something inside of you that's going to feel like you always have to strive for it, even if it has already come to fruition, even if the sexes generally are both equal because you've seen it that way for so long, is there going to be something inside of you that's going to say, no, we still have to keep fighting. And if you don't see something to keep fighting for, is there going to be a temptation to exaggerate problems so that you feel like you still have purpose? Because I feel like a lot of people feel like they need to be fighting for something. And if there's nothing to fight for, then what's the purpose? That fire in them for life dies because people need a purpose. So that's just something I'm thinking about right now. Let's see if it goes somewhere. Similar to what Pearl just said, I find that a lot of feminist ideology and thought today feels more of like a supremacist movement rather than something that is supposed to be advancing the goals of equality. I don't think that we can really Good turn point. what's going on as feminism because it looks so different to, I think, the earlier feminist movements. So in that way, I would say it's taken its last breaths of life. It's dying. Yeah, I definitely think um, it's getting more and more radicalized. For sure. So it's it's definitely still alive. Wow. OK, so I'm actually pleasantly surprised to see that there really is some diversity of perspectives here, at least what I'm seeing so far. Not everyone is on the train of women are all oppressed. We need to keep fighting. Some of these points of views are, well, hey, it used to be great. Like this whole idea of feminism was great because there was such a need. But as time has gone on, women have become more equal and the opportunities are there for men and for women. Like the lady just said right before Layla gray it's kind of dying off because there's not really a big need for it anymore it's interesting that as she said that i caught some eye rolls on the panel because i'm sure that there are some people that are like no we need to keep fighting very very strong and very very hard i'm feeling like we're going to get a good quality conversation here i think i'll preface and say that i don't know so much about modern western feminism and there might be a lot of terms that i don't know like political jargon and stuff very humble. But I believe in the advancement of women, whoever considers themselves a woman. Uh, I think there's a deficiency in society. So it's deeply rooted that um, feminism has always existed. I think America's a little obsessed with themselves and it's like always feminism is rooted in America. <laughs> and we like, are. oh, white women started it. And it's yeah. kind of offensive because for thousands of years, women have been dying for their rights. 
I think as a black woman specifically, uh, when you talk about feminism, yeah, the mainstream first thing you think about is a certain type of feminism that tends to exclude still, even today, even with intersectional fem feminism, exclude um, African-American women. And Okay, so here we get, I knew this was going to come. She's really pushing the race issue. She is saying that a lot of feminism, she's giving it its credit by saying that it does exist, but it tends to focus on white women. So I have not really seen that. I mean, I live in America. I'm pretty plugged into these conversations as an advocate of the LGBT community. My community, I have always had my ears up. I'm 40 years old, so I've been paying attention to these fights for a long time time. I've seen feminists come and go. I've seen the movement swell and drop and swell and drop. And I've never seen feminism where it's purely about white women. So I would love to say, can we hold on and ask this lady what she's talking about? Usually feminism is a very liberal ideology. And within that ideology, it tends to be extremely about the inclusion of all women, especially in America, because that is our narrative right now when it comes to inclusion is about all skin colors. I'm sure we'll get into this some other day about gender and sex kind of being dissolved nobody really wants to see gender and sex as being these differentiating things anymore which is interesting because we're having a conversation about feminism right so i don't really know what she's talking about i would love to stop her because that's a very bold statement to make and for everybody just to kind of smile and nod and kind of let that go almost like if somebody passed gas like is anybody going to acknowledge what just happened like i would have been the person in the room like can you please explain that because i don't see that but let's keep going it's always kind of done that. And also like, upper middle class white women has predominantly been the face of what we quote unquote consider feminism. She's really going hard on this, that it's upper white middle class to women. I have never seen that. I think feminism is attempting to say, okay, the first thing we agree on is that there are barriers and friction to what I need and what I want based on the fact that I'm a woman. What it ignores is that, and what privilege is, is that you may not have to think that being a woman and being a black woman and being a black woman who has a disability, for example, impacts you further. You have more barriers. You have more friction. You are less able to get what you want. You're undervalued in a way that's like, okay. So right there, she hit the jackpot lottery of throwing in all these different intersectional things that I was talking about earlier. She said that you are disabled and a woman, you are black and a woman. And I'm thinking, well, wait a minute, the conversation here is feminism. Now I understand, like I was saying earlier, that intersectionality is a thing, but this conversation is about feminism. And so although I think it's okay to like reference it, that one lady referenced it earlier. To me, it's like, why do you keep bringing this up? That that's not what the topic is. I'm not saying it's not important, but it's secondary. Yeah, there are people that have barriers because they're disabled. You need access differently than an able-bodied person. You need an elevator, a ramp. You need to make sure that there are bathrooms that can accommodate you and your wheelchair. That is a conversation worth having, but that is not the conversation of feminism. Does she mean to imply that only women have disabilities? Because a man that has a disability, the same disability that she has, has would face those same barriers that she is so this is not a women's only issue this is a disability issue that would include both genders to me it kind of looks like she's saying i don't have enough to talk about on this issue about what is stopping me as a woman so i'm going to throw in another issue that i can talk about that nobody will disagree with me on and then if i'm defending that it will look like i'm actually defending the prime topic so that people will think that i have something relevant to say in this conversation. This is called gaslighting. This is called straw man, like a straw man argument. Somebody creates something else to focus on so that you can get distracted from the real issue. That's kind of what's going on here. And it's getting kind of frustrating for me. That woman who earlier had said something, Pearl, I'm getting the vibe that she's going to say something because you can see it in her face. She was like not having it. Well, you know, that's life. That's what I mean by equity and that we're able to, without friction, all get the same needs met. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. See, I disagree with that. I think life is easier if you're a girl, um, actually. Yeah, I, think, I think there's a lot of benefits um, that men don't have. She said, I think I disagree with you. I think life is easier as a girl. This is going to get intense, I'm sure. 
I'm, I'm not going to speak anything to race. I'm just talking about gender specifically. It's usually like an excuse. Like, honestly, I think as a girl, you have equal opportunity in the world. I think there's benefits. Like, for example, we have quotas for women in specific jobs. She, okay, this girl, Mindy, in the wheelchair, she wants to literally fly and leap over this group of women to get this girl Pearl's neck. I'm pretty sure because Mindy is staring at her like, are you kidding me? You are just literally debunking everything that I just said. Well, I almost say debunking because she's not showing receipts, but you are absolutely challenging everything I just said and making it sound pretty much like a delusion. That's pretty intense, but I think it's really important because a lot of people take to these platforms and they make these outlandish statements that all women are oppressed, all black people are oppressed, and that is going to make a lot of people really angry, and justifiably so. We don't want, as a community, people being discriminated against because of the color of their skin, their gender, their orientation. It's gonna put us on guard. It's gonna put us in a place where we're ready to fight. It's gonna have us asking questions like what law have we apparently overlooked? What is still in the system that needs to be fixed like Jim Crow what what what's out there we need to change it and I feel like if you're gonna make a statement like that you have to back it up with actual evidence you need statistics and Pearl is calling this woman in the wheelchair out because she just said all of those things but she's not really explaining how that is a feminist thing to have to fight for so I think this is really exciting that are given to us that aren't given to men. So yeah, I would I would say it's easier being a girl. Just from a viewpoint over here, though, it seems there's a lot of privilege, pretty privilege in what you're saying, and that you're white and you present. Do you think I'm pretty? Thank you. Whoa, okay. So <laughs> this girl, Mindy, is just throwing in all of this stuff about pretty privilege and because you're white. Instead of focusing on the issue, feminism, giving statistics, giving numbers, instead she's trying to discredit what she's saying by saying you're white and you're pretty. You're coming from a place of privilege. That's a different issue. Maybe she is. I'm not saying she is or she's not. I'm not saying she's pretty or she's white or whatever. I mean, she might, she could be mixed or she could even be pretty privilege in some way we can get there. But what does that have to do with the conversation about feminism? When you come into this situation, if you don't have statistics and facts and numbers to back you up, then share your experience. Hey, I was told from my employer that because I'm a woman, I would not be able to get this job that I really, really wanted, or I could, but because I'm female, I have to earn less than half of what my male coworkers were going to be earning. That's a relevant conversation because even though you don't have facts and numbers, you're sharing something that had happened to you, a barrier that you faced because you're a woman. Because Mindy doesn't have a reason to believe what she believes, she has to reach and discredit Pearl by saying she's pretty. She wouldn't understand. She's able-bodied. She wouldn't understand. She's white. She wouldn't understand, which is still doesn't make sense because Mindy's white as well. She's bringing up all of these different issues that have nothing to do directly with feminism. You're white and you present. Do you think I'm pretty? Thank you. I think that you <laughs> present in a way that beauty standards have accepted. You think? And so they call me ugly on the internet all the time. They they be roasting me daily, I swear to God. I don't mean <laughs> to say I think you're gorge. I just mean that there are a certain value that we give to certain bodies. What is this about? Is this about feminism or is this about beauty and what people perceive to be beauty and whether or not that creates a privilege? That's a different topic. I don't know how Pearl is able to do this without raising her voice and getting upset because I I would be quite frustrated because I'm the kind of person that if I want a direct answer and somebody starts changing the subject or answering indirectly and bringing up other things that have nothing to do with the topic, I lose patience quickly. I mean, let's that. also dig into why these quotas exist and why these, um, what you're calling because privileges Because we want exist. special treatment. Um, no, but it's because there have historically and presently in most jobs been fewer women mm -hmm. and because of sexism. How is it sexism when we have no barriers today? That's a great question. As this uh, woman, Eli or Ellie, right next to her, starts talking about history. Now, nobody will deny that women have suffered throughout history and are even still today in 2023 in the Middle East, in those countries, because of the teachings of their religions there that do not offer equality for women. And it's really interesting to me that that is somehow ignored in these conversations because we, we focus it on America. And I understand that you have to take care of home first. 
how is it sexism when we have no barriers today? Pearl has a point. If there are places where women are not allowed equality because they're women, let's discuss that. She's asked this several times. What are your examples? What are the barriers? Mindy has brought up, well, you're pretty, you're privileged, you wouldn't get it. You're white, you wouldn't get it. And this person, Eli, has brought up history, which nobody will say is wrong. But again, she's changing the subject. The question is, what today is the barrier preventing women from getting what they want? And it's quiet. Pearl's asking a question that nobody wants to answer. Very similar to Sharon Osbourne on the talk. Answer me this mm -hmm. one, okay? Uh, do it, Sharon. I don't know. I yeah. don't understand. If he doesn't, if Piers doesn't like someone and they happen to be black, mm -hmm. does that make him a racist? Great no. question. No. No. That's good. No. Good. No. Right. So why can't it be he just doesn't like her? Why does it have to be racist? She just checkmated them. Sometimes you ask a question and you get silence because nobody has an answer. And if they do speak up, they're going to change the subject or add a different element because they can't just keep it with what is being said because there is no basis for what they're believing. Pearl is doing a really strong job of showing that. So we can we Who can have no barriers. It doesn't have barriers. Women doesn't, don't have barriers. Uh, women, yeah. What, what's we stopping have no you? You barriers. can do whatever you want. Wow. Uh, I can you? or you can. What's stopping you? Wow. <laughs> As a woman, as a woman. As a woman. As a woman. As a Clarification. Woman, as a woman. That ignores a lot that I'm a woman with a disability. So mm -hmm. there's a lot stopping me that you mm -hmm. don't have to think about. Okay. She's doing, she's really driving this in, this whole thing about her disability. Pearl said, what's stopping you? And she wanted to clarify, as a woman, like, I see that you have a disability. She didn't disregard it. She didn't say, I mean, I don't, what, what disability? You can do anything. No, she's saying, I understand that. I understand that your disability will cause barriers. But this conversation is about feminism. So as a woman, put your disability to the side for a minute. Put the fact that you're white to the side, that you're black to the side, the other intersectional things that I was talking about, what as a woman is stopping you from getting what you want? How frustrating is that? And how come nobody's advocating for Pearl? She's a woman. All these feminists in the room are supposed to be advocating for women. Is Pearl not a woman? But because she has a view that is contrary to the popular view, she's asking for receipts. She's basically saying, I'm open. Teach me. Tell me if I'm missing something. What is it about today that women cannot do because they're women and no one can answer her. As I said before, I'm about. speaking about women. I'm not, you're speaking I'm not, as a, you're speaking for yourself. You're speaking as, a, as an able-bodied able white woman. woman. I, Again, you're speaking as an able-bodied white woman. What does her being white and what does her being able-bodied have to do with this conversation about feminism and women? I, 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 Pearl Hats off to you. I wouldn't have, I would not be able to put up with this. I mean, I'm trying to be nice and watch my words, but this is a waste of time. This is a room full of people so far that don't really want to discuss feminism. They want so badly to feel empowered by what is against them that when just being a woman is shown that it's not really against them, they're grabbing all these other things like a lifesaver because they're drowning in this truth that is lifting them up, that they're not victims. And it's so hard to watch, but Pearl is standing her ground. So I'm actually quite proud of her. I'm sympathetic, but I don't know that I could have stayed in that room that long. She white. presents of white. Of course, of course there's gonna be other barriers if you're disabled, I'm sure. Well, like I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm talking about as a woman. Yes. So you're just gonna agree. ignore white the- White women have it easier, gap. yes. I would agree. What? <laughs> you're, you're just gonna ignore the pay gap, um, regulation over bodies. The pay gap has been <laughs> Okay, where? There we go. Okay, so now that's new issues, right? So now this person, Eli or Ellie, is saying, well, what about the pay gap? Now that is something that is worth talking about. I'm waiting to see how much Pearl knows about the gender pay gap and how it has been debunked. And if she shares that, then that would be great. And that would be time well utilized in this kind of discussion platform because, again, they're talking about actual feminism and she's talking about bodies and body mandating or something. I missed that part. Pay gap doesn't exist. It doesn't. It's the industries that women pick. Let's talk about it. There's a pay gap, but it's because women don't want to do the hardest industries. 
case. I, I don't think it's that simple. I, I think like I think that's a, an oversimplification. I think the fact of the matter is that women structure their lives differently to men. Okay, it's more nuanced, right? It's more complicated than just that women are not taking the higher positions that pay more. And what really has frustrated me about the, the pay gap, right? Like the rumor about the gender pay gap is that the claim that women don't get paid as much as men, that is what has been oversimplified. You do have to break it down and say, okay, well, are you measuring job positions, male versus female counterparts and how much money they're making in the same positions? That's not what they're doing. They're not taking into account the fact that women are the ones that have children. So they're the ones taking maternity leave. They're not taking into account that women tend to not be engineers, not because they can't be, but because men and women fundamentally have different interests. Women tend to be involved with jobs that deal more with people and relationships, while men tend to be more enthused about working with things and figuring things out. So that's why men tend to be more engineers and engineers by nature make more money. So that's why there is a gender pay gap. It's not because men are getting paid more as teachers than females are getting paid as teachers. And I think that is the important thing that needs to be said in these conversations because people walk away just thinking, see, men are making this much, women are making this much. And if there's disparities between the amount of money they make, it must be because sexism. No, there's factors involved that explain that. So I'm really glad that this is kind of coming up. Men don't give birth. Men don't have have to carry pregnancies. Men don't have to be the primary caregiver most of the time. Women also don't hold jobs for as long as men do. They often will stop and start. They'll go back into work. They'll take time off. They'll take part-time jobs. The way that men work and women work are astronomically different. And to try to say that they're comparable is, is where this issue comes from. They're not comparable. Two things. First of all, um, let's dig into why they think that um, they should take these jobs, which is society, societal sexism. And then also, um, actually, all I mean, Department of Labor, all statistics, at least speaking in the U.S. Okay, right there, I don't like it when people say, well, why do they think they have to take those jobs? Well, because society standards. I'm sorry, but no, you can't blame society and what it tells you to do if you are a free person with your own free will in like a very free country like America. I'm not going to be a doctor just because somebody tells me I should be a doctor. I'm going to be a doctor because I want to be in medicine and help heal people. That's going to be why I'm going to be a doctor. Now, I understand there are cultural things where your family has instilled in you that you must be a lawyer or you must be a doctor. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about living your life to appease society. If you do that, that's your own decision. I hate to say it and sound harsh, but that's your own problem. You cannot blame the world for what you decide to do. Your life is your choices. And because of that, the rewards and the consequences are yours for your choices. So I don't like that she tries to just say, well, society has said that women should know. Isn't the whole point to tell women that they can do whatever they want? What is it? Women can do whatever they want. You kind of just admitted that. You're just saying that women are weak and they're just going to do whatever society tells them to do. I actually think that that suggestion is sexist in itself. It advocates for a very low perspective of women. Um, have found that when compared for the same jobs, there still is a pay gap, particularly when it pertains to race. Because 60% of women have never asked for a raise. Okay, did you see how she just kind of threw in the race thing at the very, very end, especially when it pertains to race? Well, first of all, where are your statistics with this? And a lot of times when we're talking about race, we have to also think about socioeconomics, right? Where are these people living? If you work at a McDonald's in the hood versus working at a McDonald's in Beverly Hills, you're probably going to make more money at the McDonald's in Beverly Hills. So you have to take things like that into consideration. And then, of course, you're going to poll the Democrats graphics and you're going to say well there's more white people in beverly hills and there's more people of color in the ghettos and in the hoods this must be a racist thing well no it's geographical and yes there are racial disparities but that's based off of geography and that's a whole other topic but you can't just cry racism when you see these disparities because there's so many other factors that are involved usually culture but we can talk about that in another video so how can you complain about your pay? If why, you don't why, are they, why are they not asking? Wait, what happens when women ask for raises? So, Sorry. Did you hear that? But they're not asking for raises. Why are they not asking for raises? 
because they're choosing not to. I, I don't like this ideology that you can just blame other people for your choices or for your lack of choices. Your life is your life. And yeah, education is important. You need to tell people that they can choose to do what they want with their lives. But at the end of the day, if somebody doesn't make a choice or somebody makes a choice, you have to respect that. And if you don't like it, then tough. You can't just blame white people or blame straight people or blame men for things like this. You have to allow the individual to take some responsibility for their own life and the choices they made or didn't make. Sure. I've been, yes. I've been wanting to say something, but I want to be respectful. I don't, like, don't want to interrupt people and I want to let them finish their <laughs> just thoughts. Jump in, just but, you know, go through it's the just, wall. Uh, it is a very privileged label, right, to be able to say that you're feminist. Right? right, and I say that because I come from a working class background of Dominican immigrant parents. My mother would not necessarily identify as a feminist. I look to my mother and I do think of her as a feminist. A lot of my ideas and my empowerment comes from seeing her like survive and put food on the table. When I'm thinking about feminism, I'm always thinking about who's not part of the conversation. What are the barriers? How do we think about equity? How do we think about self-empowerment and agency and having a voice, right? And having choice mm -hmm. and thinking about our basic human rights, education, access to health, uh, homes. Okay, first of all, I'm very sensitive to her story. She seems very, very sweet. And I love that she kind of gave this shout out to her mom, that her mom instilled these great values into her when it comes to hard work and those kind of things, right? Like making the most of what you were handed or what you were given in this life. I don't want to disregard that there are people that have to work a little bit harder because of where they come from. I had to, like we weren't raised rich growing up. My mom worked really, really hard. My dad worked really, really hard. Even though they were divorced, me and my sister weren't raised with silver spoons. You know, really the only time that we ever got clothes was in the beginning of the school year, right after summer. And so when I was 15 and a half, I started working. I started working really hard. And I've always had about three jobs, honestly. I mean, even now I've got like five jobs. But ever since I could start working, got my workers permit at 15 and a half, I've been having two to three jobs. And I've worked my way up. I'm 41 years old now. Hard work is something that I've always known. I don't make complaints about it. And people might say, oh, because you're brown, there are some people that are born into wealth. Well, there are some people that are brown that are born into wealth. There's a lot of people that are black that are born into wealth. There are a lot of people that are white that are born into poverty. You know, people stereotype trailer parks. It's hood. I mean, it is. It's the projects. Like there are people that are white skinned that do not have privilege. They were not born with money. And so when these conversations come up that economics and skin color go hand in hand. It really infuriates me. I understand that there is something to inherited wealth, especially with the black community, our history here of slavery and the civil rights movement and Jim Crow. I understand that heritage plays a part in this inherited wealth, but we have had several decades where communities can rebuild their lives. And it's not just the black community that has been oppressed because of systems of discrimination. There are other ethnic groups that have and they are flourishing today and it really upsets me when people just blame the past or blame a history that they never lived through and use it as a constant excuse to not get up and do something with their own life like don't just blame what happened to your ancestors this is you this is your life today get up off of that couch make your life what you want it to be and I do see some of that defeatist attitude in the way that some of these individuals are speaking and it just really upsets me because I do know that there are a lot of people that believe like that perception is reality if you think like that and if you think that's the world you live in and you think that's the country you live in then guess what it is the world you live in it is the country that you live in because you have manifested that and forced your eyes to see it in that world view so in a weird way you're not really delusional you are living in that world but that's because you created it that way I wish that others would see that I wish that people would change the way they spoke about their lives because there's so much power in what you say about the life that you're living. If you say the world's out to get you, guess what? The world will be out to get you. If you say there are struggles, but I'm going to make it, I'm going to be victorious and I'm going to do something powerful and strong with my life. You're going to do that. I digress slightly. <laughs> Let's move on. 
like having bread, having food, and those things are very important, right? And they're at the crux, right, about of what a lot of us here know that we need. It's like there are the barriers, right, that we constantly ignore that are very much systemic. Okay, now this is very important. In the context of feminism, she is bringing up the lack of opportunities for women to have the basic essentials for a holistic life. Education, bread, food, medical coverage, dental, etc. Now, is she aware that she is implying that if you are a woman, you are not allowed these things? It has to be that, that women are not allowed these things that she's claiming because it's understood that we all have to work for those things. We all have to study hard to get an education. We all have to save. We all have to work to bring food on the table. We all have to fill out the applications to apply for disability or social security or food stamps or retirement. All of those things, there's a little bit of elbow grease for everybody. So her comment about how this is attached to feminism only makes sense if she's implying that this is something that is not allowed for women and it's only allowed for men. So apparently women are refused from entering grocery stores or schools or hospitals. They're not allowed to apply for disability. Hi, thank you for calling CalFresh. Hi, thanks. I'm a woman. Oh, sorry, sweetie. We can't help you. Hi, thank you for calling Social Security. Do you have a disability? Well, yes, I do. Thank you so much. Can you help me? Absolutely. We can help you. What's your name? Maria. Oh, wait, sorry, you're a woman? Yeah, we don't help your kind around here. And microaggressive, right? We see them and experience them every like day. Like what in the U.S.? So, like what? Thank you, like what? What would what? you like to know an example of? Some I, I know you said, you said that there is, like, barriers. I want to know what barriers in the U.S. today as a woman. Okay, have you noticed that Pearl has asked the same question? How far along are we? We're nine minutes into the video, right? Now I keep pausing it and stuff because I'm talking about it, but Pearl has asked the same question from the beginning of this conversation. So many people have spoken and spoken a lot and yet no one has answered her very simple question. So I don't know how Pearl is doing this. I would have been furious by this point. I would have threw my hat down i would have got up and made a big old dramatic exit because i just don't have the patience for this but there is pearl smiling being kind and being patient and graceful and allowing people the opportunity to answer and they kind of have some sass they're giving her some attitude but yet no one has answered her no one has told her as a woman what barriers they're facing and that was literally the first thing she asked in this conversation about feminism and how important it is because feminism Feminism would aim to remove those barriers. So she's like, what barriers do we got to erase? And no one can tell her. So why do we need feminism? Like she's the only one that really is on track of this whole conversation. She's the only one that's actually giving a relevant response. Whether you agree with her or not, it's the only thing that is coming out of someone's mouth that is relevant to this topic. Everybody's trying to make it about everything else. Well, as a woman or as a woman of color, let's be specific. To as me. a woman. I Okay, there we go. She lost me. As a woman or as a woman of color? Does anybody else want to scream? Yes, of course, as a woman. I don't know why it has to be. That's why you're here to talk about this because you're a woman. This is about feminism. Just like Mindy threw in a woman with a disability. Now she's throwing in as a woman of color. We can get to that stuff later. That's secondary. This is about being a woman. What about you being a woman is creating a barrier. So I hate that Pearl has to say, really? Because of course, now this is one of those things where she's darned if she does and she's darned if she doesn't. If she just says, just as a woman, then automatically she's the bad person because she's disregarded that this girl is a woman of color, right? Well, now you just disregarded that I'm a woman of color. That's supposed to be important. It's like, there's just no winning with somebody that is that determined to stay a victim. I cannot wait to see how Pearl's going to deal with this because again, I would have been out of the room by now. And we don't, well, no, I can't answer as a woman. I just, just feel like your woman, question is... Right? I, <laughs> she made it worse. No, I can't just answer as a woman. So she asked her earlier, she said, well, what would you like to know? And then she says, well, as a woman or as a woman of color? Well, as a woman or as a woman of color? She gave her two options and she chose one. She says, well, I can't do that. I'm only going to do this. Like, what is this? Uh, so frustrating. That is so enraging. Like, I'm going to start shaking. You just set her up. How, Pearl, do you have the patience that you have? I really don't like it when 
people waste my time. I'm very guarded with my time. Now, does society have double standards? Yes, of course. There are social double standards for women, right? Women are told to dress more modestly than men. If a woman flirts with a lot of men, that's looked at more negatively than if a man flirts with a lot of women. No, a woman is a blankety blank if she sleeps around with a lot of men a man is a stud and he's you know oh play uh, oh yeah you know like i don't know men it's more positive if he's had a lot of conquests with women where if a woman has had a lot with men it's looked at differently i think a lot of that has to do with the fact that the woman is the one that carries the baby i could be wrong but i think if the man was the one carrying the baby during a pregnancy i do think that would shift and i do think that men being promiscuous would get a lot more heat than women because I think it's aimed at who's going to be the one carrying the baby. That's just something that I've always thought, but that's for another topic. But that's not what's going on here. This is about systemic. They use that word often, systemic. There are the barriers, right, that we constantly ignore that are very much systemic. And the question is, what systemically is keeping women from being able to have the same opportunities as men? And Pearl has asked for an example and no one has given that to her. Right? It's kind of hostile when you're like, I don't, I, there are no barriers to what I want. Congratulations. That means you have a privilege where you're not facing any friction and that's I mean, showing. Okay. In fairness, she didn't say that she had no barriers. What she did was she asked you, Mindy, what your barriers were. She was opening the floor to hear your experience and to listen and to learn from you. But you couldn't apparently give her an answer of what barriers you face due specifically to you being a woman. And so she has no choice but to just move on. She was trying to take you seriously. She's being very fair to you. So be fair in return. And I feel like it's I think like as an Amer I think as an American you're very privileged. Mindy is saying you're showing a lot of hostility. How ironic, Mindy. You're actually the one showing more hostility. You've completely disregarded everything that Pearl has said because you said she's white, she's able-bodied, and she's pretty. Keep it real. Like, you're the one that has dismissed her. All she has done has asked you a very simple question that you, I want to say, refuse to answer, but I think it's more than that. I don't think you can answer it because you don't have an answer because you don't have these barriers that you're saying you have. Have. You keep bringing up your disability, which obviously has barriers, but that's not the question. It's about you being a woman. I think that it's really upsetting. You're turning this on Pearl, which is very typical of these kind of conversations when somebody gets cornered and they don't have an answer. They don't have the ability to back up what they say they believe. They then have to attack the person that is asking them because they're embarrassed. It costs people too much to just say I was wrong. I need to rethink what my life perspective is. I need to rethink this. I'm on the wrong side of this debate here. I have a lot to consider and maybe I need to make some choices. That's really hard for a lot of people to say. And Mindy is striking me as that kind of person right now because she just keeps repeating herself over and over again. I'm not ignoring that. Okay, this conversation obviously needs to continue, but we are not going to be able to get to all of it in this one video. So we're going to put a little pin in this. We're going to keep this series going about feminism Feminism and the different kind of issues that overlap and are within this subject. So if you enjoyed this video, please smash the subscribe button, smash the like button, and drop me a comment. How do you feel about the word feminist? Do you identify as a feminist? Do you not? And why? I would love to hear all about it. Till next time, I love you. God bless you. Thank you for sticking around with me on this kind of hard to talk about topic. I really appreciate it so much. Stay safe out there and I will see you in the next video. I love you. Mwah. Bye.